It is in the middle of Ivy play, and right now Clemens is averaging just about 15 points per game in league play. Get you some numbers on Roxy Behrman in just a little bit, but now we're set for the opening tip. Camilla Emsbo for the Bulldogs, and it's Lillian Kennedy for Columbia and the Lions wearing their road grays with blue numbers and white trim. Start with possession. The Bulldogs in their home whites with blue numbers and blue and gray trim. Well, immediately Columbia works inside. They're not great at that pressure inside. They take a lot of mid-range jumpers, and right away, Janaya Clemens comes up short on a jumper from the left elbow. Barriman quickly the other way for Yale and draws a foul. Just 31 seconds in, already a whistle called on Michaela Markham, the first year from New Jersey. Andrew inbounds under her own basket. Emsbo got double team, lost it. Nice steal from Riley Casey and a fast break the other way. Markham passes behind her. Back outside, a little jump shot. Rattles in and out from Clemens. 0 for 2 start on her evening thus far and Berriman collects the rebound. And that's where Clemens is dangerous in that mid-range jump shot. If you give her some space, she's gonna try to exploit it. See what Roxy Berriman can do for Yale. Dumps inside to Alex Cade. Couple of passes around the wing before Tori Andrew drives in, righty layup, le left it short. Clemens the other way, crossover dribble, lefty through the lane, kicks back outside. Casey to Markham, and now Lillian Kennedy slows down the pace. Markham again, works on Behrman. No room to go inside, Yale defense just warming and getting that secondary defender in. Markham from the corner knocks it down for the first basket of tonight's ball game. Markham with, Markham with her 12th three-pointer on the season, more of a facilitator. This is a good three-point shooting team, Columbia, as they start with the press and nearly force a turnover instead. The referee does call it a turnover. Columbia will have it out of bounds. This quarter has really been so instrumental in the last two games against both Harvard and Dartmouth for Columbia. They've gotten off to really good first quarter starts against Harvard after Harvard put two on the board early on. Columbia went on a 22-0 run. Also, then against Dartmouth, they went on a 9-0 run. Clemens knocks down the jumper. So the first quarter really has been big for Columbia to try to build the lead early on, something that they struggled with in non-conference play. They would find themselves down, kind of have to work their way back the length of the game, but that first quarter has been huge for them, so they're going to want to get off to a good start here against Yale. Three for the Bulldogs from the corner is too strong, and we've seen Columbia start to employ that full court pressure on defense after a made basket. Don't get the advantage there. However, a big offensive rebound from Sienna Durr keeps the play alive. And the Lions will actually fluctuate between a full court and a zone defense. They work between the two. Another three ball is good. This time it's Riley Casey who knocks it down. One of the top three point shooters in the Ivy League. 37% from downtown is third best in the ancient eight. Nearly a steal on defense and instead it's a foul against Tori Andrew. Leads to another turnover by the Bulldogs and this Columbia team has really come out firing in the first two and a half plus minutes. Off to a very similar start again in both their games against Harvard and Dartmouth. The first quarter has been huge for the Lions and they're showing you why right now they are going full force, 110% effort and blocks and steals and everything you've got, they're throwing it at Yale right now. The record of this Columbia team may not be indicative of how they're currently playing. Janaya Clemens knocks down another mid-range jumper. 10-0 Columbia run through the first three minutes to start and a quick foul called on the Lions. That goes against Clemens, her first and the team's second of the first quarter. That is one of the downsides of running that full court press is that you get your hands in the way, you might get a foul called in an area that you don't want to give up a foul in the middle of the court. So Columbia will have to definitely focus on that while they're running that full court press. And a foul in the backcourt as well, but now okay. Barriman has to pass ahead before a 10 second violation, a wide open Andrew three. She knocks it down for Yale to get them on the board. 
Tori had been struggling from the three-point arc a few weeks back, but she slowly picked up her shot once again. Here's Clemens inside. Turn around Jay. Nothing but net for Janiah Clemens. She's got a quick six. She was going 1v1 with Gorman, too, and did such a great job of creating space. Here's Gorman for Yale. Puts up a little jumper off glass and continues to help the Bulldogs fight back. Gorman more instrumental in the rebound game, fourth in the Ivy League in rebound per games, but when she gets going on the offensive side, things look up for the Bulldogs. Nearly a bad pass turnover by Michaela Markham, but she got bailed out as Camilla Emsbo just knocked the ball out of bounds. Emsbo then checks out in favor of Alexandra Mond. And that's what the Bulldogs need to do. They need to disrupt the offense right now for Columbia, just kind of throw them out of ry rhythm and rattle them up a bit. Inbound underneath their own basket. Here's Clemens, pulls up another mid-range shot. This time she can't get it. And Behrman pushes quickly ahead for Yale. Roxy, full head of steam through the lane. Draws the foul, can't go for the old-fashioned three, but she will head to the line for two on Sienna Durr's first personal. Take a look back at that foul drawn by Behrman. Behrman at so much speed driving in towards the basket. Their defense really never has time to set their feet. Adur just didn't know which way she was going to go and instead got called for a blocking foul. Behrman gets on to the score sheet for the first time with a made free throw. And a couple of substitutions for the Lions now as both Durr and Markham check out. Roxy's been having a great season thus far for the Bulldogs. 20 plus points in 10 games this season. Double figures in 20 of 21 contests. And as she's been doing so often this season, Allison, she is coming off another career-high weekend last time out in which she scored a career-high 33. Just when you think Behrman reaches her full potential, she surprises you. Getting another rebound for the Bulldogs there, but she just keeps getting better and better. She's so athletic. She adds so much to the roster for Yale. She is top 10 in the Ivy League in pretty much every statistical category that matters. Foul called on Lillian Kennedy. Now four of the Columbia starters have one personal foul. Behrman is top 10 in the Ivy League in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and minutes per game. Here's Roxy, free throw line jumper, left it short. Big rebound pulled down by Lillian Kennedy, who averages about five per game for the Lions. Lemons kicks outside, fake the three from Stephanie Flynn. Now a drive inside from Casey, and she goes off glass and in. Five points early for Riley Casey. And that was a good beat, read by Casey just to drive in. A lot of times you don't see Columbia again go all the way into the basket. Nice finish from Alex Cage. Just put her back to the basket, turn around, and found the bottom of the cup. Alex Cage, such a hustle player, too. She gets frustrated when a couple of her first baskets don't go in, so you know she's happy that one did. Here's Madison Hardy. Hardy, another one of the first years on Columbia. They are a very youthful team. Clemens pulls up a contested jumper, doesn't touch anything. And now Roxy pushes ahead for Yale, two on two. Behrman through two, puts it up and draws another foul. Roxy Behrman will head back to the free throw line when we return in New Haven. Lions up early by five. It was an early run for the Columbia Lions as they've taken a five-point advantage over the home team Yale Bulldogs, 14-9. But Roxy Berriman just drew another foul. That was the second on Janiah Clemens. So Roxy will head to the line for two to try to cut into the deficit. And she knocks down the first free throw. Berriman now three for three from the line in this game. She shoots at about 59% on the season. Don't always see perfect free throws for Roxy. She starts four of four. During warm-ups a few minutes before the game, everybody for Yale was taking free throws, and she went 0 for 2, so good to get the misses out of the way beforehand. Yale has made this a one-score game, 14 to 11. Durr inside, kicks back out. And a turnover committed by Imani Whittington, who just checked in a few moments ago. Just the first turnover as well for Columbia. Yale had three before that break. 
Columbia with none, their first in the game. Open look in the corner, but the three ball from Bronwyn Davies is too long. Durr runs the point, but hands off to Casey. Guarded by Berriman as we took under four minutes to play in this opening quarter. Casey pulls up from the elbow off the mark and a big rebound pulled down by Alex Cade. That rebounding is definitely gonna be a big factor in the game today. Mon gets double teamed out to Davies and now as the ball usually does, finds its way to Berriman, goes inside, lefty layup too strong and a late whistle. Roxy will go back to the line for two more. First foul called on Riley Casey as the Bulldogs are in the bonus. Here's Behrman taking on Casey. Just Casey see that left arm. little late push there from Casey that drew the whistle. She has a couple of words with the referee quickly just to clarify and Roxy starts her night five of five from the strike. We talked about this youth of the Columbia team, Allison, and they are really young to say the least. One senior on the roster, three juniors, and five sophomores paired with six first years thus far. So there is a ton of room for growth right now for Megan Griffith's team. Just her third year, so she's starting to get her recruits in. They're learning the system a little bit, and she's relying heavily on these first years to provide scoring, in fact, the freshmen alone provide 52% of this team's offense. Getting a lot of playing time, which is good for the future, especially with Coach Griffith. She gets to develop them, and she gets to give them the playing time as a freshman. They don't have to wait till their sophomore seasons, but they're getting that experience at the collegiate level now that can transcend to the next three years. Tori Andrew picks up her second and the team's second foul of this quarter. You saw Allison Guth there the head coach for Yale for a brief moment. This is her fourth season. She's got over 60 wins at the helm for the Bulldogs, including 23 Ivy League wins. Three attempt is well off the mark, but a foul committed underneath. That goes against Alexandra Mond, her first, and now the team's third. Allison Guth has had a great run so far here at the Lee Amphitheater. Yale has won 10 straight at home. Of course, she'll hope to run the table in the home schedule this year. Barabin rips the ball away from two Columbia players, and then the Lions get whistled for a foul. See it again. Roxy just splits the two defenders, gets right in between Sienna Durr, and she's whistled for the foul. It's causing havoc there. And of course, if Yale right now, they're number two in the Ivy League, tied for second with Harvard. But if they can continue this hot play, especially at home, Ivy Madness is right here in about a month's time. Exactly. They're hosting the Ivy League tournament this year, which was something that stuck out to them in the preseason. She said the girls on this team are just so excited about it. But, you know, it's something that's in the back of our minds at all times because it's going to be here regardless of if we make it. Behrman's shot was deflected but kept in bounds. Yale does a nice job recovering on defense to not allow a Columbia fast break. Here's Markham back in. She is one of the greatest assisting playmakers in Columbia history, nearly turns it over. Instead, with 18 on the shot clock, the Lions will keep possession. Yeah, Markham is really the floor general for the Lions. She's first in the Ivy League, as we mentioned earlier, in assists with 5.6 per game. That's actually good for third in the NCAA among freshmen. So she's making a big mark. She's got 100 assists on the season alone. Nearing that record watch here, she just takes it herself and barrels right down the lane for another two. Five points for Michaela Markham, nearly her season average at five and a half per game. She leads her team in steals as well with 20 on the season, so she's more of an impact player in the assist game and in the steal game, but today adding a lot of points to help Columbia Lions out. Roxy takes a three off the back of the iron. Long rebound comes out to Casey. She pushes the pace with two foul, with one foul, excuse me. Back out to Markham. Lefty dribble down the lane. Little dump off inside, knocked around, and last touched by the Lions and Lillian Kennedy. That's what Columbia likes to do. They want to get those quick transitions up court. They want to run the floor. That time just got away from them. They're not so good at penetrating into the lane in the half-court set. They take a lot of threes. They're a very good three-point shooting team. 
They like to run the fast break opportunities. And of course, Michaela Markham is a great playmaker. So this team takes a lot of mid-range jumpers. Speaking of which, Camilla Emsbo gets on the score sheet with her mid-range jump make. Bulldogs just within one right now, 16 to 15. Just over a minute to play. Inside out right now for the Lions, Markham. Crossover dribble, pass underneath the basket. Good look, but too strong from Kennedy. Mackenzie Hewitt in for the Bulldogs, five in white. The foul underneath. That goes against Stephanie Flynn, the junior from Massachusetts, her first. Yale has been in the bonus for quite some time. So Camilla Emsbo will head to the line for two. Emsbo, a 56% free throw shooter on the season. Again, an area of focus for Yale, especially at this point point in conference play, they need to begin to knock down those free throws. They hit just 62.5% as a team, which is second worst in the Ivy League. And in close games, it comes down to those free throws, and head coach Allison Cooth talks to us after nearly every single home game, and she knows it's a focus, and she tells us, we're working on it in practice. We just, we got to get there because we know in those close games, you have to knock down those free throws. That can make the difference. And you can just tell how big of a difference it is in Ivy League play because Yale at 62.5% is seventh best in the Ivy League out of eight teams. Emsbo goes one of two, but on the other hand, Columbia is just fifth best at the free throw line and they shoot 69%. So that's 6.5% better and they're only two slots better in terms of the Ivy League rankings. Emsbo, another rebound for the Bulldogs, dumps off to Hewitt instead of running coast to coast herself. Behrman gets a rare break near the end of this first quarter. We're under 30 seconds to play, about a second and a half. Ready to play, keeping themselves warmed up, checking out the scoreboard, and it is right, 16-16. A sarcastic applause from the crowd here at the Lee Amphitheater. Majority of the starters on the floor right now for the Bulldogs, although Mackenzie Hewitt gets some minutes instead of Tori Andrew. And this waiting game is just so frustrating as an athlete. Again, you're all pumped up and ready to go for the game, and then you have nearly 10 minutes of stoppage time that you're going to have to shake off, keep your muscles warmed, and get back out there, both physically and mentally. Yeah, it's uh, weird because after these 10 minutes of the second quarter, then they'll have a 15-minute halftime anyways. So we're back underway in New Haven following the delay. Bulldogs begin with possession and a lot of ball movement right off the bat. Inside, outside, kick to Emsbo, knocks down the jumper just behind the free throw line. Five points for the Yale first year. And that is the way that head coach Allison Booth wanted her athletes to come out of that stoppage of time. Right out of the gates, adding a couple points. Well, now they've got that two point lead that they thought they had coming into the second quarter following the reversal of a call. Beautiful pass underneath, but the reverse layup doesn't go for Casey. Hewitt in transition, dumps inside to Emsbo through two, leaves her layup a little short. Foul called on Camilla and will go the other way. That's Emsbo's first and the first team foul for Yale in this second quarter. Emsbo just trying to do a little too much underneath the basket to get the rebound. Important to see how Columbia can respond here. Still struggling to Final lane inside though. Casey for three, knocks it down. Riley Casey hits her second three-pointer of the game. She's got a game high eight points. One of the better three-point shooters in the Ivy League, over 37% is third best. And as we anticipated, Columbia staying with the full court press. Behrman a hard fall after the layup. Cade can't get the offensive rebound to go down. And another foul whistled on the Bulldogs. Goes on Cade for her first. Back and forth thus far between Yale and Columbia. After Columbia went on a 10-0 run, the Bulldogs clawed back in the first quarter and we're starting the second quarter right where we left off. And both teams have done a good job at that shaking off the dead time and just jumping right back into the game. Casey thought about another three, instead gives it up. Clemens through the lane, picks up her dribble just inside the elbow. Four to shoot for Clemens. 
at the free throw line, pulls up a high arcing shot, back iron up and no good. Alex Cade rips down the rebound. Emsbo turnaround jumper, just too easy for the 6'5 first year. She's got seven to lead the Bulldogs. Finding her rhythm with that shot. Nearly two identical knockdown in this game. And creating space in the center of the paint. Three ball for Columbia, too strong. That was Madison Hardy. Berriman up ahead for Yale, back to Cade. Roxy again pulls from three, too strong, but she bricks it in. Berriman hits her first three, she's up to nine points for Yale. First six coming from the free throw line. And a nice knockdown jumper for Clemens. Stops a little bit of a Yale run as they've cut the lead back to two. Yale slowing things down. Emsbo inside, gets double teamed, has to fire out to Megan Gorman. Kate at the free throw line, wide open, look to Emsbo, nice cut. Just caught her defender napping and Camilla goes up to nine points now for Yale. That was just good passing by Yale. They opened Camilla up, the first opportunity wasn't there so they set the ball back out, they passed it around and then they found Camilla inside again once she was able to lose the defense. It's a race to double figures right now, four players in this ball game are one basket away. Clemens, a tough shot, puts it up and rattles it home. She gets the 10 points first and will head to the line for the old-fashioned three after Roxy Behrman picks up the foul. Here's that finish by Clemens, taking on Behrman 1v1 and coming out on top. Seems like most of Janiah Clemens' shot thus far have been in the off-balance nature. Yeah, that pull-up jumper, that's her her sweet spot where she's able to find that rhythm. She's kind of right inside the three-point line, about 10, 10 feet out from the basket. Can't connect to finish the three-point play. She's just a 61% free throw shooter this year. And it was interesting talking with the Columbia staff ahead of this game, Allison, that they said part of their game is the mid-range jumper, which in terms of men's basketball is really a dying art these days. You see a lot of threes and a lot of layups, but not a whole lot of mid-range jumpers. Double dribble called on Yale and another turnover. Yeah, an art that hasn't been heavily developed in the most recent years in men's basketball, but Columbia Lions, they like that game plan and it works for them. Outside it's Clemens once again, picks up her dribble. Casey an open look from three, halfway down and no good before Emsbo comes down with the rebound. That was a good look by Casey, just left uncontested, unguarded from the three-point range. Unfortunate, it didn't go in for her. And another turnover by the Bulldogs. This time it's Camilla Emsbo called for the travel. And after a break, Tori Andrew comes in and replaces Mackenzie Hewitt, who gave Allison Guth a good four-plus minutes to start the second quarter. Guth has definitely been working on developing Mackenzie Hewitt throughout this season. She's an athlete who is a first-year member of the team for Yale, but she has a lot of speed, a lot of energy. They just need to tone it down and put it into game play. Markham and Clemens. Here's Clemens on a pull-up jumper, left it short. Cade fought for the rebound. See this matchup a lot. Behrman guarded by Clemens and vice versa on the other end. And a lot of double teams right now being employed by Megan Griffith's squad. Three from the corner was too strong. Columbia tried to push it, but a good recovery from the Yale defense. Durr inside with two fouls, gets fouled and will head to the line for two. Emsbo picks up her second. Four fouls on the Bulldogs now in this quarter alone. Here's that foul on Emsbo, the reach. <laughs> Just didn't stay straight up and down as well. Durr bricks the first free throw. She does shoot 74% from the stripe. 47, excuse me, 49% field goal shooter is third best in the entire NCAA for first year players. Is a big scoring threat, but so far because of those foul issues, she has not had a whole lot of opportunities. And the press 
still hot for Columbia. Yale so far hasn't really seemed phased by it. They had trouble early on with that 10-0 run by the Lions to start the game. But since then, Roxy Berriman, Mackenzie Hewitt, that time Alexandra Mond have fought through it successfully. Andrew, an open three, knocks it down. Two threes for Tori Andrew. She increases her 26% clip from downtown and has given the Bulldogs a four-point lead. Durr drives baseline, has to kick out to Clemens. Got a fortuitous bounce off the official's foot right on the sideline. Excuse me, Casey. Nearly lost it. Now Clemens does lose it. Mond picks it up. Keeps it away from Clemens, and Roxy will slow down the pace. Good defense there by Yale, just standing their ground, waiting for Columbia to make the mistake, and then they were able to capitalize on it and make something out of it. Behrman pull-up jumper, too strong. Markham pulls down the rebound. Markham will want to get something going on offense here for Columbia. Durr inside, off the side of the backboard. Fight for the rebound, Durr has it, but on her backside, now Mon fights for it, and a jump ball called as Roxy is holding the ball up right on her back. And possession stays with Columbia. When we come back, the Bulldogs have gained a four-point lead over the Lions. You're watching the Ivy League on ESPN+. It's times like these when you've got to stay centered. Or delay, but it didn't seem to hamper either team to start the second quarter. Didn't phase either program. They both came back out on the court firing, and they've looked actually pretty good ever since on both sides. Clemens, a contested jumper right at the end of the shot clock, uses all sides of the rim to knock it down. She is well into double figures now with 12 points. Game high score. Roxy Behrman controls for Yale. She's got nine. Gorman a fake. Now it's Mond. Andrew drives inside, and a foul called. That goes against Michaela Markham, her second, and Columbia's first team foul in the second quarter. Shot clock resets for the Bulldogs. Behrman, an open three, pulls right away and knocks it down. Second straight three from Roxy Behrman, and she's got 12 to lead the Bulldogs. Columbia has done really all they could to try to shut Roxy Behrman down, but when she pulls up from three like that, it's really difficult to try to step two and put Roxy to a halt. Quick three on the other side. That's no good from Stephanie Flynn. Bulldogs open up a five-point advantage. Roxy drives baseline, hesitation in midair, double clutched, but came up short. Markham pushes quickly on the other side. Out to Flynn, now Markham again, Clemens underneath. Fakes left, goes right, draws a foul, and goes back to the line for two more. Foul whistled on Alex Cade, her second. Here's Alex Cade going 1v1 with Clemens. Up and over. And the issue once again for a Yale defender just not staying straight up and down, and that's where the official gets the call. Yeah, they've been caught reaching a couple times, kind of hinging forward with their upper body, letting their arms fall down. You want to play that hands up defense where you're in one straight vertical line. Clemens a 61% free throw shooter this season. Janiah goes one for two at the line there. 2.10 to go in the first half. Columbia has played a very tight game thus far with Yale. Behrman pulls up too strong. Offensive rebound down to Gorman, fights for it and keeps it. Both of these teams went one and one last weekend. For Columbia, it was in New York City. For Yale on the road at Princeton where they won in overtime and then at Penn, the Quakers stayed undefeated with their 54-48 win over the Bulldogs. Andrew on the baseline, nowhere to go. Now Behrman kicks into the middle for Mon Davies and back out side. And a foul called, Megan Gorman drove right through the lane. And the foul goes on Lillian Kennedy, her second foul. 
Like the ball movement again by Yale, working around the perimeter, trying multiple times to break inside. Finally, Foreman takes it. And an easy call for the official there. Foreman bricks the first. Kennedy was just set up right in the middle of that restricted area as the secondary defender, an easy whistle for the referee. By the way, the officials tonight, Mark McClenney, Don Comiskey, and Ashley Good. 0 for 2 at the line, but the Bulldogs control the offensive rebound. Chance for an extended possession now for Yale. Andrew outside into Mond underneath. Great pass and a good finish from Alexandra Mond. Six-point advantage for the Bulldogs. 85 seconds to go off glass and a banked in three on the baseline for Riley Casey. She has 11 now. That was a quick response coming from the Lions. Big final minute of this first half. Yale lead by three. Barriman a deep three. Nearly got it to go after it hit the rim and knocked off the backboard. Instead a potential two for one chance for the Lions. Again, they like to work from the outside areas. Baseline jumper for Clemens, swish. 15 first half points for Janiah Clemens. And a turnover by the Bulldogs on the inbound with 32.6 to go. Columbia can nearly hold for the final shot. This is one of those situational moments where they don't want to hand the ball back over to Yale, so they're going to want to take some time off that clock and add two more to go into the half up one. Columbia doesn't need to. Quick shot was deflected, and Roxy pulls down the loose ball, and now she can hold for the final shot. And Allison, how many times have we seen this? Yale has the ball right at the end of the quarter, the half, or the game, and Roxy Behrman comes up with a big shot. And that is who you want to have the ball in their hands, Roxy Behrman, in a situation like this. Pass gets knocked away for Mond underneath. Fast break opportunity with four on the clock. Casey for three, left it short. Mon the rebound, and that's how the first half ends. Head coach Meg Griffith said, you know, we really need to transition from being a first half team to a full game team. So transitioning from the first half to the second half, well, we do, we've done a good job in the first half. Alex Cade as two right off the back for Yale. But again, it's that second half mentality that they need to carry into this match. Coach Griffith wants a good start for Columbia. It's a good start for Yale with that quick basket. About 15 seconds in, Sienna Durr well off the mark on her first attempt in the second half. Up ahead, Roxy to Emsbo. Hesitation dribble and an easy two. Camilla Emsbo finds her way into double figures with 11 points. A quick short then long pass up court by the Bulldogs, something they focused on in the preseason. Trying to connect Behrman to Emsbo, and that was textbook. Clemens dribbles into traffic, lost it for a second, pulls up for a free throw line jumper, front rim and in. 17 points for Janaya Clemens. She is just six shy of tying her career high 23. Set that at Dartmouth one game ago. Gorman with some pressure there, able to maintain possession, pass back out to Behrman. See how Yale can respond six to shoot for Behrman guarded by Markham lefty dribble free throw line extended nothing but net for Roxy Markham the first year second in the Ivy League in assists per game pulls up and rattles it home a lot of front rim action for Columbia thus far Markham up to seven points halfway to her career high and that was the answer that Columbia needed after Behrman knocked down that jumper. They wanted to answer right back because the focus coming into this match was to guard Behrman, to kind of shut her down. Don't let her go on a run. So it's important that they're able to answer shots like that. Emsbo has it knocked away before she can get to it. Last touched by Camilla, according to the officials. Columbia ball. Allison Guth doesn't agree. Neither does Emsbo. Markham averages 5.3 assists per game, best on the team. Second in the Ivy League with 100 assists on the season. Should say leads the Ivy League in assists per game thus far. 
Durr inside, has to kick it back out. Three ball on the way, off the mark. Rattles around, finds its way into the Hillhouse band section. And over to the Bulldogs. Yeah, Casey trying her luck again. She's three of six from beyond the arc in that first half. Markham had just one assist in the first half as well, so this Yale defense has done a great job stifling the Columbia game plan of fast break opportunities and mid-range jumpers. Emsbo inside, spin move, righty layup from the left side is good. Markham crosses over against Gorman, into the lane, pulls up, nowhere to go, kicks back out to Durr. Sienna inside, fights past Emsbo, too strong, and now Roxy runs the other way for Yale. Behrman against Markham, steps right by her, off glass, too strong, and the rebound goes down to Lillian Kennedy. Up ahead, in transition, that's what the Lions do best. Sienna Durr hits her first field goal this afternoon. And that was a good feed from Clemens over to Durr. She read the opening, just set her up perfectly. Fast break opportunities for the Lions. They've cut the deficit to just three. Emsbo at the free throw line has a significant size advantage, uses it, but she's too strong. Another fast break chance, miscommunication. Durr through two, off glass and good. Kennedy and Durr nearly watched the ball fall between them out of bounds, but instead Sienna Durr is back to back fast break baskets. Andrew to stop the run. Too strong. Offensive rebound kept alive by Gorman. Fast paced start to this second half through the first four minutes of the third quarter. Kate at the elbow. Lost it in the corner. Behrman, an open three off the hesitation, knocks it down. Behrman had all day there to set her feet, square up at the basket. That was way too easy for her. Durr outside for three, too strong off the back of the iron. Fights for the offensive rebound. Cade extends her arm to fight for the defensive rebound. Meg Griffith not too happy. She's really not happy with the officials, Allison. She thought there was a foul right before the Behrman three and then on that rebound from Cade. Pour in that Columbia though can shake it off, but Gorman open. And hits it. Another three for the Yale offense. Gorman has five points for Yale. Columbia going to need a basket here. They can't let Yale just go on the run again. Coach Griffith saying they need to weather the storm better in the second half. That's what she's looking for from her team today. Bulldogs have opened up a seven point advantage, 14 to eight in this quarter. Behrman knocks the ball away. Five to shoot for Columbia. Shot clock doesn't reset. Durr doesn't realize it. Markham with one to shoot. Fires and goes off the back of the iron. Offensive rebound from Clemens. She can't convert. Durr fights for another one. And a foul called. Underneath it will go against Sienna Durr. And we'll step aside. An action packed five and a half minutes to start the third quarter. Bulldogs lead by seven in New Haven.
17 points so far for Janiah Clemens, number one in gray, to lead the way for the Columbia Lions, but they find themselves down by seven to Yale midway through the third quarter. 47 to 40, the Bulldogs lead the Lions. With Allison Gaskins, I'm Josh Hess. Yale needs to go the length of the floor following the foul just before the media timeout. That was the third personal on Sienna Durr. More press employed by the Lions as well, but the Bulldogs have gotten used to it at this point. Mackenzie Hewitt back into the ball game for Yale. It's a deep three for Andrew, and she's a little strong. Possible run out for the Lions. They've been good in transition thus far. Coast to coast. Now Clemens at the free throw line and an offensive foul underneath. That goes against Sienna Durr. She can't believe it. That's her fourth. Just the team's second, but Sienna Durr is in deep foul trouble right now with 14 minutes still to go in this contest. She'll be sitting for a while, Allison. You mentioned Durr leading the way in points per game and in rebounds per game for Columbia. That is not the athlete you want to be in foul trouble right now against Yale. She had limited minutes in the first half due to foul trouble as well. Has played just 17 minutes thus far out of a possible 27. Emsbo baseline jumper, a little short. Roxy Behrman, by the way, for Yale, just one rebound shy of another double-double. Bounce pass inside, strong look, but Emsbo was up to the task defensively to shut down Sidney Brown. And that has really been the difference in this game, the rebounds, Yale with 28, Columbia with 20. Bad pass turnover for the Bulldogs will give Columbia another shot to cut into this seven point deficit. Roxy Behrman continues to improve her averages with tonight's game, averages 6.7 rebounds per game. That'll keep going up. Needs one more for a double-double. Here's Madison Hardy. Outside for Casey, gets the screen from Hardy, nine to shoot. Casey outside, Hardy again drives inside, and a foul called on the Bulldogs. Goes against Alex Cade, her, for her third, and the Bulldogs first in the quarter. We'll check out that foul here. Say Cade pushing up against Hardy with that right arm. And coming out of that break, Hardy had the last words in the huddle, being a freshman for Columbia, so she is one of their more emotional leaders. She's able to get the team fired up. She's pretty vocal. So you want to see Hardy get going as well. Casey again, nothing but net for Riley Casey. Hits her fourth three of the ball game. She's up to 14 points. Four of eight, shooting 50% from the free throw range, or excuse me, from the three point range. Just doing an excellent job helping keep Columbia in this game. High pass for Hewitt, can't keep herself in bounds. Tori Andrew just thought Mackenzie Hewitt was a little taller than her 5-5 <laughs> frame. She has a good vertical too though, but wasn't able to reach for that pass. Brown in the corner, has Hemsbo on her and a whistle before the play can even get going. Roxy has a couple of questions for the official, but she picks up her second foul and the team's second as well. Alexandra Mond will come back in for the Bulldogs, replaces Alex Cade. Mond got her second career start last weekend. She's been playing some really good basketball for Yale, had a career high a few weeks ago in the last home back-to-back -back for the Bulldogs. And her senior season, Mon has only gotten better and better. She's found ways to contribute to help Yale to their second place in the Ivy standings right now. Here is Mon for the Bulldogs and she travels before she can put the ball on the floor. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter, 47-43. Bulldogs controlling at the moment. Columbia can make this a one possession game with the bucket right here. Yeah, Hardy outside. Possession. Casey and Hardy, a two man game right now. Casey for three, yes. Riley Casey again has 17 points. 
Shows off why she is the number two three-point shooter in the Ivy League. Make that number three three-point shooter. Averages two and a half per game, and that will go way up after this <laughs> evening. In the corner for Hewitt, just a little strong. Knocked out of bounds, last touched by Yale, and a chance for Columbia to take the lead. Lions have not had the lead since 9.01 to play in the second quarter. It's been almost two full quarters for the Lions, but a bucket here will do the trick. Maughan to kick ball. Great stop if she is a goalie. And it's yeah, that was a soccer <laughs> play right there, Josh. Kick saving a beauty. She gets up without any injury. There could have been a dangerous play as she just stepped right on the ball. And that's just natural instinct sometimes on a bounce pass. Try to just get yourself in the way for Mond. It was with her foot. Casey again. Heat check, and she's off the mark. Out of bounds. Last touch by Columbia to the dismay of their bench. Columbia bench not happy with that call at all, especially when they've begun to feel the momentum shift in their direction. To lose that possession is frustrating for them. And with so many first-year players making up this team, a big part of Meg Griffith's coaching right now is to just have them forget the last possession, keep moving forward, keep their eye on what's going on at the moment. Emsbo on her second attempt finally gets it to fall. She goes up to 15 points. That's a big thing across sports is to control what you're able to. And Sydney Brown knocks down her first basket of the evening and we're all knotted up at 49 with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter and Yale can hold for the final shot. Had the same situation at the end of the first quarter. Bulldogs could not convert. They'll just keep working it outside until the shot clock, the game clock, excuse me, gets to about six seconds. Open look for Gorman. Now a chance for Columbia. Here's Clemens, and she can't get it up in time. So we are all tied up at 49 as we head to the fourth quarter. A back and forth affair will continue for the final 10 minutes. You won't want to miss it on ESPN+. Plus.
10 minutes to play in New Haven, and we are all tied up at 49 apiece between Yale and Columbia, and a big part of that has been Riley Casey for the Lions. She has been on fire from deep so far tonight, Allison. Five of 10 from three-point range. Riley Casey has put the team on her back and helped them tie the game up now at 49 apiece. Here's Casey, fires into the corner for Madison Hardy. Sienna Durr has not seen a lot of minutes tonight due to foul trouble. She's on the bench with four. Roxy Behrman gets the steal for the Bulldogs. A heads up play as the ball was going out of bounds off her. She picked it up and hit Riley Casey to deflect it out of bounds. Behrman just showing off her athleticism, her basketball IQ here, making it all work in her favor. So the Bulldogs now have the first chance to take the lead in the fourth quarter. Skip pass and a three-second violation called on the Yale offense. Back-to-back -back turnovers on both sides to start this half, to start this quarter. And this is the quarter where you can't have those mental mistakes. You have to play a clean game. It's all tied up. It's all going to come down to making the most out of each possession that you have. Again, this Columbia team working on that closeout game, how to close out as a team. We'll see how Yale does closing out on Casey going forward. She's guarded by Tori Andrew, the Bulldogs three-point threat. Clemens a fadeaway, left it short, and Andrew is right there for the board. And that's good defense by Yale, guarding Casey from you know beyond the arc, just trying to shut her down because she has been so hot. Cade, one dribble up and in. Six points for Alex Cade now. Yale leads by two, out of bounds, last touch by Yale. Quick substitution brings Michaela Markham, the leader in assists in the Ivy League, back into the game. And they need her out there, the facilitator, just opening up some opportunities for Columbia. Again, every possession so valuable right now. And it's going to come down to rebounds in this fourth quarter. Possible second chance points for both sides. Columbia is not a strong rebounding team. Yale is very good rebounding. They are nationally ranked. Ooh. That time it's a steal underneath for Gorman. And that's where the pack line defense that Yale runs comes into play. They don't let anything funnel in from the baseline. They're able to get that secondary defender and close those gaps. Huge offensive rebound for Cade, but her putback is too strong. You mentioned rebounds being important while finishing off on those second chance, just as important, if not more. You need to get those shots to fall. Clemens outside, slows down the pace. Now dribbles in right through everybody, down the lane and in. 19 points for Janaya Clemens, four shy of her career high, 23, that she set last time out against Dartmouth. Borman outside, now Behrman. All tied up at 51. Little dump pass underneath for Emsbo, but a swarm of Columbia players works well for the rebound. And a bad pass turnover that time from Markham. Markham's got a better than two to one assist to turnover ratio coming into the night tonight. But just one assist thus far and one turnover. We'll make that her second turnover. Again, Yale trying to control the pace of play here. They like to, again, pass the ball and that's been a big focus for them. Getting everyone to touch the ball on offense. Outside for Roxy Behrman. 20 points for the junior. And four of those now coming from beyond the arc. So a total of 12 points from the three-point range. It's been a three-point barrage on both sides. Casey again. Yes, Riley Casey swirls in the three. She's got 20. All tied at 54 still. Outside, Gorman wanted it, instead goes through the lane. And a foul on the defense, Columbia underneath. Nobody is happy to our right. Foul goes against Clemens, that's her third. Teams first in this quarter. Came on the rebound, and it looked like just an over the back on Camilla Emsbo. So a fresh shot clock for Yale. Inbound underneath their own basket. 
Behrman pull up from the baseline, halfway down and out. Emsbo fights for the rebound, couldn't pull it down. Now Markham up ahead. Try to push the floor. Casey had an open look for a split second, drives in, high off the glass, no good. Fight for the board, last touch by Behrman. Can tell Allison that the intensity is just ratcheting up on both sides. Everybody knows what's at stake in the Ivy League, how important each game is. Three ball too strong from Stephanie Flynn, gets it right back, and now Casey outside. Both teams just need to stay calm, play their own game, both playing a little rushed. Durr finds her way back in, and the ball finds her right away. She has seven. Again, Durr playing with four fouls. Oh, maybe playing a bit reserved. The Bulldogs would like to get her disqualified from this with a fifth foul. Emsbo has her shot altered right at the point, and it's last touched by Kennedy and will stay with Yale. That was a good job by Kennedy, disrupting the Yale offense. Five fifty-one to go, 15 on the shot clock. Bulldogs down two. Columbia staying with that man-to-man -man defense. Tough take for Tori Andrew, but it draws a foul. Lillian Kennedy picks up her third. Andrew, one of the better free throw shooters for the Bulldogs, over 76% on the season. And that's somebody you want at the line in this situation for Yale. We talked about free throw shooting early on as she hits the first. And these free throws are key right now. A chance here to tie the game back up. It doesn't get much more important than that, especially nearly halfway through the fourth quarter. One of two. Alexandra Mon nearly had a big offensive rebound. Instead, the Bulldogs are down one point. Out of bounds, last touched by Durr, and right back to the Bulldogs. Neither coach has called a timeout thus far, Allison, too, which I think is pretty interesting how back and forth this game has been. No team has really gotten out to any sort of run. No coach has needed to stop momentum or draw up some key plays. And the official stop play looks like a clock issue. Yeah, the officials taking more breaks, more timeouts than the coaches in this game. Also, each coach got a free, <laughs> you can call it maybe three timeouts put together or with more. some technical issues earlier. Yeah, an extra half time earlier. So the ball will stay with Yale. Two seconds off the shot clock, 5.36 on the game clock. Now they reset the shot clock. Mond outside, had an open look for three, instead goes right underneath, too strong with the right hand, but gets her own rebound. Mond just inside the free throw line, wide left. Too many missed opportunities there for Yale, and a foul coming on Alex Cade. And she's really not happy there, that's her fourth, and the team's third. But she didn't really think she did much, tried to get out of the way, and just threw her arms up in disbelief towards the official. Cade signaling over to head coach Allison Guth. I'm good, I'm gonna calm down. <laughs> Doesn't want to be taken out of this game. Riley Casey, who's got 20, leads the way. Career high, 31 points. That was earlier against Hampton. She had seven three-pointers in that game. So she is no stranger to a, a lot of three-point attempts and a lot of makes from behind the arc. Clemens for the Lions right now. Three to shoot underneath, out of bounds. Last touched by Columbia. Again, the Columbia coaching staff and bench not happy with the call there. Well, they'll have a chance to <laughs> stew on it for a few more minutes. We'll step aside, 4.50 to go in a one-point game in New Haven. Four fifty to go in a one-point game. This has been another exciting contest at the Lee Amphitheater in New Haven, Connecticut with Allison Gaskins. I'm Josh Hess, and 
Allison, we saw Yale take Harvard right down to the wire at home a few weeks ago before Roxy Behrman top play buzzer beater from near half court. Emsbo underneath gives Yale the lead once more. She's up to 17. And Columbia, who is just two and four in Ivy League play, is giving the Bulldogs a run for their money. And in that post play you just saw, that's where the height really comes into play for Camilla Emsbo. Six foot five, just no issue reaching up and placing the ball in the basket. Of course, Columbia hasn't had a whole lot of offensive rebound opportunities, and that's because Yale is just such a good defensive rebounding team. Here's a steal for Behrman. She takes it all the way herself, lays it in, plus the foul. Roxy Behrman has a chance for the three-point play, which would give Yale a four-point lead. And for Columbia, that's not what you want to do. Get Roxy Behrman fired up. She remains composed. She gets the steal, lays it in with the N1. She started the game with six straight free throws and is now up to 22 points for Yale. Had a career high 33 points last weekend. This is to give Yale a two possession lead over Columbia. Behrman sinks the free throw despite just a 59% clip coming into tonight's game. But she has been perfect from the line tonight, seven for seven. Markham unfazed with Behrman guarding her. Markham thought about the open three instead of mid-range jumper. No good. Emsbo has the rebound. That's what Columbia likes to do. Three-pointers and mid-range. Staying with a man-to-man -man defense, Columbia. Trying to keep the pressure on Yale. Bronwyn Davies, number 40 in white, gets some minutes late in the action tonight. Air ball three from Behrman. Rebound kept alive, and the shot clock did reset. So now the officials will stop play and have to reset. Officials will call for the substitutions first, and now they'll come over and talk to the scorers. But Allison, talking about rebounds, Yale is ninth in the country in all of NCAA Division I women's basketball with 30 defensive rebounds per game. They average roughly 43 rebounds per game, which is 20th in all of college basketball. And on the other hand, Columbia just 36 rebounds per game, lowest in the Ivy League. So what Yale averages defensively, Columbia pretty much gets total. Behrman well off the mark with seven seconds on the shot clock. Transition opportunity for Durr up against Emsbo. Rejected. Camilla Emsbo second in the Ivy League in blocks per game and proving why right there. Just so hard to get around the 6'5", five-star recruit. Colorado Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Bulldogs content to just let the clock run down. Off the deflection, just four to shoot. Here's Behrman outside, pulls up for three. Off the front iron, rebound goes down to Clemens. Up ahead with Casey. From the free throw line, a straight line shot in and out. Couple last opportunities for Columbia going in and out. Important that they're able to get a basket to drop. Yale just two of their last 10 from the field, but they are on a 6-0 run right now over the last three and a half minutes. It's been a roughly four minute scoring drought for the Lions. Outside, Andrew a three, rattles it home. Timeout on the floor called by Meg Griffith. She needs it after a big run for the Bulldogs. They've taken a seven point lead with 2.03 to go in New Haven. Looks like there might have been some confusion. No, no timeout called. Meg Griffith saying it wasn't my call timeout. Allison Gute saying not mine either. So everyone back out there on the court. Ten points now for Tori Andrew after that three. She's three of five from downtown right now. Seven point lead for Yale. Crunch time right now for Columbia. Seven point deficit. They'll fire a three off the mark, but a big offensive rebound. Durr on the block, turns around, nowhere to go. 
Clemens, free throw line extended, yes, plus the foul. Oh, and that was desperately needed for Columbia. 21 points for Clemens. Janaya Clemens here pulling up. Again, that mid-range jumper where she's so dangerous. Gets the end one. Foul goes against Roxy Behrman. She's got three now for Yale. Clemens with a free throw here will be one point shy of her career high. 142 to go. This is a big three-point opportunity for the Lions. Stop on the other end, and they're in business. Clemens, that rainbow-type shot. Just a little short on her free throw. 61% on the season. Harriman content to just use clock. We'll see that for Yale over the last 90 seconds. Emsbo inside. Cade turn around. No good. Clemens rips down the rebound, and Columbia will push. Clemens through the lane, up and over, but no good. Tried to get the career high right there, and with 70 seconds to play, the Bulldogs lead by five. And a timeout on the floor called by Allison Guth. With Griffith saying that they were just ready for the challenge to come in to New Haven, play Yale at home, and they have lived up to those expectations. You can tell they're really ready for this game. They have been pushing since the first sound buzz buzzer of this game just kind of got the ball rolling. Roxy Berriman and Camilla Emsbo have combined for 40 of the 63 tonight for Yale. They combined to usually average about 31 points per game. The press is on. And the shooters are in right now for Yale with 60 seconds to play. Basket here will definitely help secure the lead for Yale. Berriman outside, she gets swarmed as Coach Griffith has put on the double team. Gets a screen from Emsbo, four to shoot. Berriman drives inside, pull up, got it. That's where Berriman just comes up so clutch in situations like that. Under a minute to go in gameplay, they needed a basket there, they count on Roxy Berriman. Big smile on the face of Roxy Berriman, feels it from the rest of her teammates as well. She's got that clutch gene that not many performers <laughs> have, and the Bulldogs have gained now a seven-point lead with 43 seconds. They have gotten away with a slight push-off there, but just a great-looking baseline, Jay. That is the best way to describe it, a clutch gene. Roxy Behrman, through and through, exemplifies that. 43.1 to go, timeout on the floor was called by Columbia to try to draw something up both offensively and defensively to try to stop the Bulldogs. Of course, we expect some press action and definitely to try to trap and steal it. If not, they'll have to start playing the foul game. Yeah, you have to put it all out there on the court for the last 43 seconds left in regulation. Columbia desperately needing some points here and a stop on the other end. Lions inbound on their own side of the floor. So they'll have three timeouts depending on how these final seconds play off. And right now just using a lot of time before Casey gets the ball. Tori Andrews all over. Pulls from three, gets fouled. So she'll head to the line for three. That foul goes on Tori Andrew, her third. And that's nearly as good as a made three, although depends how Riley Casey does from the free throw line. Just undercut the shooter right there. Didn't give her enough space to land. Casey, one of the better free throw shooters in the entire conference. Second in the Ivy League at 82%. Just an all-around good shooter. She's third, as we mentioned earlier, in three-point uh, three shooting percentage as well in the Ivy League. And continues to build on her night. Has hit the first two free throws. She's got 22 points now. And a perfect three of three at the free throw line. A big, big job at the stripe. 
And another timeout called by Columbia, this time to set the defense and drop the next offensive play. But right now, the pressure is on the Bulldogs because Columbia will go for the steal and the trap. If not, they will foul. And one thing that Yale has not done well this year is hit free throws. Now we mentioned how they're second to last in seventh place in the Ivy League and free throw percentage only averaging about 10 a game, shooting at 62 and a half percentage as a team on the season. So for Columbia, it looks pretty good right now. You try to send Yale to the line, put the pressure on them, see if they can handle it. By the way, an update in the Yale and Columbia men's game, which is going on at the moment. That game is at the half. And Yale leads Columbia 35 to 25. 31 seconds to go into Tori Andrew. Columbia doesn't go for the foul right away. Instead, the trap and steal. And eventually out of bounds, last touched by Columbia. Half second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Lions need a steal. Behrman. And she gets fouled. Could have gone either way. Saw her forearm extended on Lillian Kennedy. And Kennedy gets whistled for her fourth foul. The Bulldogs not shooting free throws just yet. That was... The fourth team foul, so one more to go before Yale starts to shoot. Here's Cade outside to Andrew. No foul yet, and finally a foul. No call yet from the official if it was on the shot or not. But it shouldn't matter. She'll head to the line for two regardless. I think the official's discussing if maybe it was flagrant or not. They want to call both teams to their benches, and they may come over to take a look at the replay. It's been a very interesting last maybe 20 seconds of gameplay, Allison, because we have Meg Griffith right in front of us calling Roxy Berriman an actor every time she gets fouled or there is contact, she'll hit the deck, which obviously as the opposing head coach, she's not happy about in this situation. The officials do look and see if that was flagrant or not, and that could be the big difference maker right now in the game as you will be shooting free throws, but it's a matter of do they get possession afterwards or not. That could be the nail in the coffin in this game. Yale with a four-point lead right now. They want to knock down these free throws. But really, again, I told you, coming into this fourth quarter, it's going to come down to that possession if you can make the most out of each one. And if it does become deemed a flagrant foul, I mean, it just really helps Yale out. 21.4 to go. Allison Guth very animated in the huddle for the Bulldogs. Same story goes for Meg Griffith in her third year. She is just 7-27 and 27 in Ivy League play. So all of these games make a big difference to her. It has not been a great start for Columbia, but as we've been talking, there are a lot of underclassmen on this team. Five sophomores, six first years. The first years have really combined for a lot of the scoring, 52%. And Camille Zimmerman graduated last year to leave this Columbia program. She was Columbia's all-time leader in points and rebounds. So it's been very tough to make up the difference that she left early on. And Columbia hasn't won more than three Ivy League games since the 2010-2011 season. No doubt Columbia has a bright future ahead of them again with all those young athletes on their roster getting a lot of playing time. And since Coach Griffith took over the program, one of the things I love that she instilled into Columbia, into Columbia is the acronym EDGE. So it stands for Energy, Discipline, Grit, and Excellence. This is something that she teaches to all of her athletes. And last year, at the end of the season, Janiah Clemens was named the 2018 Edge Athlete of the Year for their team. So it's something that they are all working to the length of an entire season to try to get that accolade to embody what it means to live out that acronym edge. Well, she really has showed it so far tonight. Really underratedly has come out away with a double-double so far. 21 points, second on Columbia, but 11 rebounds to lead this Lions squad. Roxy Behrman has been stuck at nine rebounds for quite a while. Camilla Emsbo, two rebounds shy of a double-double on the Yale side. Now, Janaya Clemens just averages about six rebounds per game, second on Columbia, so nearly doubles her season average tonight, which has helped keep Columbia in the game. Four-point margin at the moment. Yeah, Clemens tied her former career high against Harvard with 21 points, as mentioned. But again, she upped that to 23 against Dartmouth in their last game. So 
So the officials come away with just a common foul. One against Riley Casey, her second. Barriman, excuse me, Tori Andrews shoots two for Yale. She's a 77% free throw shooter, one of the better on this Yale team, and that's why Yale tried so hard to get her the ball, and this is the foul that caused the review. The pull down with the right hand coming from Casey. Two of two at the free throw line for Tori Andrew, two big free throws. And another timeout on the floor with 21.4 to go. The Bulldogs have opened this up to a six-point advantage. And Allison, I think we know what to expect on the other side for Columbia. Should be a Riley Casey three-point attempt because she's already hit six so far tonight. That's what you want to rely on, the hot hand for Columbia. Feed Casey, open her up for three. Take another look back on that foul by Casey coming down on Andrew with the right arm. You can tell there was nothing intentionally malicious there, which is what goes into a flagrant. But emotions are running high right now on both sides. Each team wants an advantage if they can get it from the officials. And that's the key, the emotions. Both teams having to battle those emotions in this big Ivy League matchup. Again, a lot on the line. A pivotal game in the season for both programs. Here's Clemens right at the top of the arc. Outside for three, in and out. Clemens, another rebound. That's her 11th. Pulls up a mid-range jumper, no good. Fight around the rebound for more offensive glass, and finally a whistle blows. We've got 12 rebounds for Clemens now. Foul goes against Kennedy. That's her fifth. She is out. And two free throws coming for Yale with 6.9 to play. The Bulldogs will probably seal it right here. Alex Cade on the line. Alex Cade just a 52.3% free throw shooter coming into this game. Let's see if she can stay composed and knock these down. No more one and one opportunities, so she gets two regardless. And that make makes it a three possession game now for the Bulldogs. Yale really good from the free throw line tonight. Four clutch free throws down the stretch for Yale. Overall, 13 of 17 from the free throw line. 76 and a half percent, Allison. I think <laughs> that'll make the other Allison in the building. Allison Guth very happy after the game tonight. Again, Josh, after just about every home game, we talk with Coach Guth after. And she always mentions those free throws, always tells us that they're working on it. She points that out as well as the assist in the game. So you know she's going to be happy with both categories. Yeah, I think in the in the post-game press conference, it usually goes, <laughs> you or I will just say free throws, and then she just she's hangs like, oh, her head. I know. But this time around, when we say free throws in the post-game press conference, you might get a I smile. Think, yeah, I think, it, I think it'll be a better response. Eight-point advantage for the Bulldogs, 6.9 to play. Inbound to Casey, has to fire from straight away, left it short. Amisbo deflected it. There's Berriman, and there's the final horn. The Bulldogs solidify an eight-point victory over the Columbia Lions and remain undefeated at home this season. Seven and